Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by the channel today. Um, I'm gonna share some a couple items that are gonna go into our Etsy store very soon. It, they may be up by the time this video is out, but if not, they will be up shortly after this video comes out. Um, some fixed blade knives we've been working on to get posted for sale for a Christmas rush. And um, they all have leather sheaths that I made. Um, I use nine, 10 ounce veg tan leather on all my sheaths. Um, I hand stitch everything. I don't have a sewing machine, so everything, any stitching you see is done by hand. Um, I use Ritz of Tiger thread. Um, it's a nice heavy thread that I find is probably the, one of the best ones that I've ever used. Um, I use Feeming's Pro Dye on everything, you know, just different colors. And then I use Bickmore Heavy Duty Leather Preservative on, on all the leather. So I don't put a, I actually don't put a top coat on um, because I want that natural patina to come out and I want the item, the leather to patina over time. And sometimes when you put those top coats on, they kind of, you get a patina, but it doesn't patina as quickly or doesn't get that kind of, you know, used, like worn, that nice rugged worn look to it. And so that's why I don't use a top coat on a lot of things. But let's get started here and I'll show you what I got. Um, so the first one I got is a neat little knife so this is an imperial fixed blade they came in many many versions as you can see um this one happens to be imperial i think utica had them colonial had them they're pretty much all the same knife um it's a hollow handle knife it's kind of an inexpensive knife but they get very very sharp and these were very common when i was a kid and you know they were pretty like an inexpensive like bait shop thing that would sit on the counter or be at the counter of, a, of your local bait shop and you could pick them up for a few dollars but they're very collectible red is a very collectible color um, anytime I can find colonials or imperials with red handles I tend to, to scoop them up if we can if, if they're good enough to be restored sometimes we find them and they're just really in rough shape but as you can see got a nice leather sheath here that I made got hand stitched got a nice thick bonded welt and um, copper rivets on the belt loop just a nice simple sheath this sheath will last for a very long time and I use mahogany Phoebe's pro dye so you get a nice nice color there so uh, the next one up is a K bar um, is it's a K bar 1232 it's a really nice knife this is an older K bar, so back when they were still making real high quality items. Um, this one's got a little bit of pitting on the blade, but it's it's very nice. It's super sharp, as you can see. It's a K bar. So you can see the K bar from the sunshine, but it's a nice. The leather's really good on it. It's solid. It's a solid knife. It's very sharp. Came out really well. The dude got that one super sharp. Um, and then, as you can see, the sheath there. I used a like a crocodile printed veg tan leather. I really like, this is one of my favorite leathers. Not a lot of people like it, I like it. So I make some stuff out of it. It's not a big seller. People don't ask me for it or anything. It's just, it's something I think is cool. So, and I make some stuff out of it. So this was kind of to satisfy me. But again, you know, bonded welt in there. This one's also mahogany, copper rivets and burrs, Ritz of Tiger thread. So, and this one's, this one will be available too, along with these others. Um, hopefully by the time this video comes up, if not, um, probably within a day or two of this video coming up. So um, another one we have coming up, we got this one I believe is an Imperial. Let's see, well, it's probably Utica actually, cause it's, it's but you can see it's, this is a, one of the heavy duty ones. Again, this is one of those ones that came in many versions. They were Colonial, Utica, Imperial, different versions. Some of them better than others. This is a, one of the really nice heavy duty versions. You can see how thick the blade is. It's got a nice guard on it. It's got the Bakelite scales with brass rivets. This is a very nice knife. It's super sharp. Um, a lot of the Utica brand ones, they did a, like a real light laser engraving on it and it just, it came off. So. And I think that's probably what this one was. It was a Utica Sportsman. But as you can sell it, see, it's very nice. It's very nice. And again, um, 
Made the sheath for it, veg tan leather, eight, nine ounce. Got the bonded welt, Ritz of Tiger thread, copper rivets and burrs, and then I used a, like a light, tan, a light brown color on this one. So, and then I gave it a little bit of tooling, give it a little, get a little love there on the tools, little accent there, but nice, simple sheath. Um, that one's, and it's a nice little set. There you go. All right, so the next one I have is a really, I really like this knife. So this is a case fixed blade. It's an XX from 1969. All right, so let's see there. Nice knife, very nice knife. I really like this knife, but I mean, it's in great shape, 1969. The leather's in really good shape. It's tight. Um, it's just a really nice knife. And then I'll show you the sheath here. So you got, again, the eight, nine ounce veg tan leather. Um, I gave it some tooling there. So I gave it a little tooling. Gave it a little bison there with some stars. Little, little stars there. So copper rivets and burrs, Ritz of Tiger thread. I use a one millimeter tiger thread there so and then the mahogany this this was a really nice piece of leather i used for this sheath because i really i picked out a specific piece of leather for this sheath for that knife so and it just you can see the dye just came out nice and even and smooth whenever the leather is you know whenever you have a really nice piece of leather the dye just it just takes the dye really good and there you go that's that one. So we'll put that one back together. And there you go. Um, then we have this one here. This is a really neat knife. So this is a Heller Brothers from Prussia. So this knife is dated from 1899 to 1915. You can see Prussia on there. You got the little crown. See the crown? And you got the brass. Yeah, brass scales that somebody's carving. And you, what what I find a lot with these, not this particular knife, is there's always a, an initial carved in them. I'm not sure what that what that was about, but you you almost always find some kind of something carved into the handle. Initial, you know, H. This one's an H. I've seen W. I mean, any letter and all kinds of things. So I think that's kind of neat. That's just don't really know what it means, but I just think it's kind of neat and it's really particular with this specific knife so um but there you go Prussia is a really cool knife um when I started doing a little research on it and discovered what it was about I was like all right I got to make a really nice sheath for this knife so and then here you go again there's the sheath gave it the tooling gave it the bison with the stars again this is a light brown Phoebe's pro dye Got the Ritz of Tiger thread, hand stitched. Again, I hand stitch everything. I don't have a sewing machine. Copper rivets and burrs on the belt strap. So this is a really neat knife. So, and then the, la the last one I have to show you, out of all of them, this one's the most valuable one. We don't mess with marbles knives too often because um, many times when we find them, they're very high priced and they're in very poor shape. Um, so we stay away from them and plus, um, they usually are mixed in with some of the newer marble stuff and the newer marble stuff, the quality is just not like it was in the old days. And so you'll see sometimes, you, you know, if a guy's got a bunch of marbles and knives for sale, he'll have some from the thirties, forties and fifties mixed in with some from the two thousands and two twenties. And it's a total different quality and different kind of knife. So, but there you go. So this is the Marbles Woodcraft. Um, this is a very popular knife design, but the knife is in great shape. It's got a little bit of smudge from the from the uh, Bickmore that was on the, the sheath, but this knife is in really great shape. It's got the Bakelite pommel on the end. Um, this is a really beautiful knife. This is a very popular design. Um, I'm probably going to do another video separately about this knife. So, but 
there you go there's the sheath i made like a little flap sheath kind of give it a little bit of a different look to it i use brass on this one getting washed out by the sun a little bit there but again you know the same things eight nine ounce veg town leather again it was a nice high quality piece of leather so you can see how smooth the die came out um but it's a beautiful knife beautiful sheath and this this will be available in our etsy store um so that's what i got for you today on this video um it's a bunch of knives that's what i was doing all last week so i haven't posted a video in a while but um i usually try to only stitch one a day if i if i'm stitching because you know hand stitching and i'm not a professional leather guy so hand stitching can get a little you know make your hands stiff and all that kind of stuff so but i actually did four of those in one day so i was like i stitched four in one day i was like all right that's enough for now so i haven't did any stitching for a couple of days so but anyway um those are really nice they're going to be available on our etsy store pretty soon uh, the link will be in the description below thanks for watching the video thanks for taking the time um if you like this video hit the like button hit subscribe put a comment down below and we will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.